Hey guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to this video tutorial where we are building a CMS application using Angular and ASP.NET Core. In the last video tutorial, we installed Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio IDE. In this video tutorial, we will be installing MS SQL Server on our operating system. So I'm using Mac OS, so I cannot directly install MS SQL Server uh, as we do it on Windows. So what I'm going to do is first go ahead and download the container application which is Docker. So go ahead, open your browser and search for an application called as Docker for Mac. You will be then taken to this page. I will provide this uh, link in the video description. Go ahead and click the option download from Docker Hub. And while you're on this page, you will see an option to get Docker. Click on this button called as Get Docker. And then once this button is clicked, you will see a DMG file being downloaded. I have already downloaded the file, so I'm going to now just minimize my browser and then click on the DMG file and start installing it. So all you have to do is after you have clicked on the DMG file, the file will open a pop-up window which will have Docker application. All you have to do is drag it into your application folder. I have already done that. So if I go to my launchpad, I should have Docker here under my applications and you can do the same. You can then go ahead and eject the installer. The next thing that you will see when you run the Docker application, you will see that Docker icon right here on the top on the information bar here and then once it's completely started you will see this option docker desktop is running while it's being started you will see it as docker desktop is starting after it has started you option would be it's running so now the next application that we need to download is a GUI based application to manage our docker containers previously we could download kitematic from Docker itself, but since now Kitematic is not a part of Docker, uh, so we have to download it separately. So all we have to do is once again go back to our browser, go to kitematic.com. The link once again will be provided in the video description. Click on the option which says download the Docker toolbox. You'll see an option which says uh, Kitematic is still supported and is available. To download separately so let's right click and go to the github repo so kitematic is maintained over here all you have to do is scroll down and then you'll have an option which says installing kitematic and you will have a link which says download the latest version let's click on it and here on this page you will have options for different operating systems so since i'm on a mac i'm going to download kitematic for mac and once i click that the zipped version of that application will be downloaded. So once the download is complete, I can minimize this. Go ahead and then unzip the Kitematic application. The Kitematic application, once unzipped, I can go ahead and drag it onto my applications options and then I can go to my launchpad and I should have Kitematic over here. Let's click and start running Kitematic. So we'll have a pop-up which says Kitematic cannot be opened because it's from an unidentified developer. So we'll click OK and then what we want to do is go to our system preferences, go to security and privacy, go to general, and then what we want to do is the option which says Kitematic was blocked. So let's click open anyway. Let's click open again. And now Kitematic is loaded. You can close system preferences. So we don't need to enter a username or password at the moment. So we can just skip for now, close this, and now we have Kitematic running. So this is how you will install Kitematic after installing Docker as a separate application. So now the next thing that we want to do is install our MS SQL Server container so that we can use it for developing our ASP.NET Core application. 
So once we have KiteMatic running, the next thing that we want to do is install the MS SQL Server container. So inside KiteMatic, you will see that the most popular containers, a list of most popular containers uh, on the featured or recommended section. So the one we are looking for is MS SQL. So the first option here with 30 million downloads is the official uh, image or container image from Microsoft. So let's go ahead and click create. So once we click create, uh, the image for the container would be downloaded and then it will install it. And then we can start running the MS SQL Server uh, container. So now the image is downloaded. Once it's downloaded, the container will start running. Uh, and then you will see this option on your Guidematic window. So the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and click start on this container. As you see, there are certain options that we need to specify before we start running the MS SQL Server container on a Mac. So let's go ahead and go to settings. And here inside settings, we need to specify certain options. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's add the option accept underscore EULA, which is end user license agreement from Microsoft. We need to accept it. So let's, and the option Y stands for yes. So that's the option that we need to add. And that's the option that was being asked uh, by the software before it starts running. So we need to accept the end user license agreement in order for the container to start running. So we need to add that. Save. Now the next thing that we need to add is a password for a user. That's the SA user, which is the system administrator. So SA underscore password. And let's specify a password. I'll keep it simple, docker SQL123. Keep in mind that when you use special characters, they don't show when you save them. When you save the uh, details, it won't show. So sometimes you might be surprised that the password doesn't match the password that you entered because there are some certain characters that are missing. Uh, that's not the case. Sometimes uh, Kitematic hides the special characters. So I've not used any special characters over here. So all I'm doing is the password, setting the password as docker sql123. Let's click save. Also, sometimes Docker might give you an error on your window over here saying that the password is does not match the requirements, uh, password requirements. So all you have to do is enter a special character. You could just add an exclamation at the end or you could add a special character to make your password much stronger. But at the moment, we don't need it. So I'm just going to leave it as it is and click save. So I've added these two options, accept end user license agreement, and then save the SA password, which is the system administrator password. Now, the next thing that we want to do is go to host name and ports. So MS SQL Server runs on port number 1433. If any request that is coming in to communicate with the MS SQL Server, it will try to communicate via port 1433. So we need to make sure that our Docker container instance also maps the request that's coming in for port 1433 from localhost to the Docker port 1433. So currently the localhost port is 32772. Let's change it to 1433 and click save. So any requests coming in from lo for localhost for port 1433 will be mapped over to docker port 1433. So that's it. So let's click save. 
Okay, so now the next thing that we want to do is we need to communicate with this server or we need to run some queries or manage our server databases. So in Windows, we have SQL Server Management Studio application available. It's a GUI based application which can be used to manage our server, run queries and so on. Uh, Microsoft also provides an option for Mac users. It's called Azure Data Studio. So let's go ahead and download that and start running that application. So let's go ahead and download Azure Data Studio. So I am downloading Azure Data Studio for Mac. So let's click download and install. So when you are on this page, I will provide the link in the video description. You will download the option for Mac if you're a Mac user. And if you are a Windows user, you can just use SQL Server Management Studio instead of Azure Data Studio. So I'm just going to download the zip file for Mac OS. Okay, my download is complete, so I can close this browser. I can go ahead and then unzip the Azure Data Studio application. I can then drag this application to my applications. And once it's done, I should see it via my launchpad. Yes, uh, sorry, so it was here. So I can click on it and the application will start running. Once again, we have got a pop-up saying that it's downloaded from internet. Do you want to open it? We'll click open. So now we have Azure Data Studio up and running. So let's close the welcome screen. If you have used Visual Studio Code, you might be familiar with this kind of interface that we have where we have the option to install extensions so i'm not going to tell you which extensions to install there are a bunch of extensions that can make your life easier as a developer go ahead and you can search and install that because we would not be using that in this video tutorial series and but this is an option that you can use for now all we want to do is test that our ms sql server instance is installed correctly so let's go ahead and click on this option here on the server option then click add connections and now let's add the information that we need to connect to our docker instance of ms sql server so my server it's local host authentication type will be sql login my username is sa so if i show you this information which is available on kitematic if you go to settings so my SA is the user and the password for that user is docker sql123 and that should be it now i'm going to click connect and as you can see i was able to connect without any problems i have connected to the ms sql server instance i can see the default databases that's available to me in order to run query i can just right click on the uh, database and run the new query and i can run any query that i need to run so this is very simple way of installing ms sql server on uh, mac os using docker uh, if you prefer some other method you can use that to install ms sql server on mac os if you are a Windows user, as again, I mentioned earlier that you can install SQL Server directly and then use SQL Server Management Studio instead of Azure Data Studio to manage your server instances. So that should be it for this video tutorial, guys. We have successfully installed our database uh, of a server. We have installed the ID that we are going to use to develop this application. The next step would be to setting up our application, install, creating our project, setting up the environment to maintain the source code and so on. So let's do that in the next video tutorial. Thank you for 
watching this video tutorial please like and subscribe our channel tech howdy